Hi guys, first let's address the elephant on my nose here. I have three large gashes on my honker and it is not because I walked into my neighbor's rose bush. It's because I had a fight with Wolverine and I won easily. Today is one of my most requested videos, how to work with HLG footage to look as pretty as me. Okay, well, let's get into it. So Hybrid Log Gamera, HLG, it was created for HDR content, but you can use it quite well in regular Rec. 709. Rec. 709 is what your screens, if they're not HDR screens, it's they they will you will see the Rec. 709 color space. So on your iPads, your computers, your TV, that's all Rec. 709. So we're going to get HLG footage into Rec. 709 and then we're going to color grade that. See the advantage of HLG is you're recording in a wider color gamut so you have more information to work with when you're color grading and when you're on 8-bit cameras like I have here, little ZV-E10, most Sony cameras at this point uh, are 8-bit. The uh, A7S III and the FX3, they can do 10-bit, but if you're on a Sony camera that shoots 8-bit only or any camera that shoots 8-bit only and allows you to use HLG, then it is a really good thing to work with because you get almost all of the dynamic range out of your sensor. You get the most out of your sensor in a way where when you color grade it, it won't fall apart. If you try to use like S-Log2 or S-Log3 uh, or log profiles on 8-bit cameras, then when you go to color grade the image, it's probably going to fall apart. You're going to see all kinds of blotches and artifacting, whereas HLG, it grades much easier. So I use Final Cut, but I will touch on DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro as well. And hopefully when you watch this, no matter what editing software you're using, uh, you can figure out how to do what I'm doing in your software. So first things first, you have to record in HLG on your camera. Right here on the little ZVE10, It's uh, you can go to Picture Profile 10. You can do any Picture Profile if you want, but they have it set up as Picture Profile 10 by default. So you make sure it's on HLG3 and uh, BT2020, not Rec. 709. Uh, some people like to switch the BT2020 to Rec. 709, but that will actually make you lose some color information. So you, it's better to convert that layer Later in post to Rec. 709. Even though straight out of camera, it won't look quite as good. So now before I take you into the editing software, my computer is over there. That is why I'm pointing. I will say that uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. You can grade it yourself from scratch, which I will show you how to do, or you can apply a LUT uh, lookup table. Now, a lot of people, when they know LUTs, they think of crazy color grades like a style, but LUTs don't have to be a style. There's, there is stylistic LUTs, but there are also correction LUTs, LUTs that take footage and make accurate colors. Uh, so if you have log footage or HLG footage, these LUTs will convert the image so that it looks proper on your monitor and then you can grade to taste after that. This is why I always use a corrective LUT, a Paul Lehman corrective LUT. Again, I will show you from scratch with no LUT, but I recommend strongly that you do the corrective LUT from Paul Leeming. It costs money, so if you don't wanna do that, I will give you a free LUT as well. I will put that link in the description. It, I am not a colorist. I wouldn't recommend you choose that one over Paul Leeming, but you can try it if you want, and if you like the results, then great. But again, I always, I'm using Paul Leeming LUT right now. I always use the Paul Leeming LUT. I correct my footage. I have accurate colors, because the thing is, Depending on your monitor, the, your computer, your monitor, your television, it doesn't have the same colors as somebody else's. So you might look at your monitor and think, I graded this perfectly. But when someone else sees it on their computer, they were like, what is this guy doing? He looks like Grimace from McDonald's. Is Grimace from McDonald's around anymore? He was the purple guy. He looked like a grape. I'm old. So I'm a Final Cut user, but I will also touch on DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, and hopefully the way I'm doing things, you will be able to apply it to any software that you are using. Now we're at the old computational device here, and this is Leeming LUT Pro. This is the website where Paul Leeming, by the way, no affiliation whatsoever in case there's any concern about that, because he doesn't know me. I don't know him, but I do love his LUTs. And if you scroll down, you uh, get the camera. He has many different cameras. You get the, um, the one that matches you for me. Well, I also have the Panasonic version, but uh, the this is a great, actually, he just updated 
his uh, LUTs, so they're even more accurate. Right now, this is the one you would get for the HLG, the Sony Picture Profiles. You see HLG and HLG3 is right there. He has a setup guide. You go in there and he will tell you exactly how to set up your camera, how to expose. Oh, and that's the thing. I didn't mention it in um, the intro there. So with the leaming light, you want to expose to the right. In other words, make the image brighter than the camera thinks it should be. So the little 0.0, .0 on your camera that tells you what the exposure reading is, that will be like plus one. You'll be like a stop over. You, he shows you how to set up that properly with uh, zebras according to his PDF and then you can get maximum dynamic range so you won't get very noisy shadows and you'll have lots of highlights and it is the best way to use HLG3 but with the LUT I am giving you for free by the way I try to make it as easy as possible uh, I didn't expose to the right just regular exposure in your camera so if you're in aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode or if you're in manual mode and it just says zeros across the board you know the the exposure meter is reading 0, 0.0 then you can apply my LUT to the HLG footage and uh, that will probably give you a usable result but again I would recommend the Paul Leeming for maximum dynamic range and color accuracy you can use mine if you feel like it there's a baby upstairs if you can hear that there's someone with him he's not he's not alone now if you don't know anything about LUTs you just you download them and then you put them into your editing software so you can use them I'll show you how to do it in Final Cut here so if you go up to the finder and it's actually hidden you have to press the option button you see how the library drops down there so that's hidden there Apple's trying to save you from messing things up and then you go to application support I believe is the first one yeah the application support and then you go down to pro apps and then you see these custom LUTs and camera LUTs so I like to put it in both you see right here is my leaming LUTs right here and and I have my leaming LUTs right here and I put them in both because that way I can use them in the drop down menu and I can also use them in my custom LUTs later if I want. So when you download the Paul Leeming LUT, you just put it here and you put it here and then it will be ready to go in your editing software. And the same thing with the LUT that I made for you, you put it in the same place. Now in DaVinci Resolve, you, uh, you would go into uh, your project management settings and uh, I'll do that when I go into DaVinci. So let's go into Final Cut and see what the HLG footage looks like. And whoa, super blown out on Final Cut. In fact, when you put it in, it gives you a little pop-up and says, hey, do you know this thing is HDR footage? Let me see if I can just drag one down. You see this? Adding HDR clip to SDR projects. And then it says use HDR tools or apply a color correction effect. And that is what we will be doing. So let me get rid of that. So we'll go back to this one here. So now this was exposed for the Paul Leeming LUT. So I had 85% zebras on my face. And uh, that is one of the ways you can expose the Leeming LUT. And then if you go over to your information tab here, click on the clip and you go to the eye. Now take a look at this down here. See this settings? So often that is on basic and you don't want it to be on basic or you won't be able to get to the places we want to get to. Now um, you can put it on settings is best for our tutorial. So put it on settings and you'll see here camera LUT. None. Well I don't want none. I want my Sony my Pro 3 and this is my HLG for Rec 709 LUT and watch this there you go battle is won now you can color grade it to taste as much as you want which is why now these I know these colors are accurate I know the exposure is is good so uh, I'm now uh, it my workflow a lot of people think an HLG workflow is cumbersome oh, I gotta do all that time color grading I press one button and then I get better looking footage than I've ever had previously before using HLG footage unless I'm using 10-bit cameras like my GH5 with log profiles I still use the leaming LUT for that and it's still one click but I use uh, the vlog and so now I'll show you my LUT here so right here this is the exposure is set normally uh, just the way the camera wanted it set so the exposure meter was reading 0, 0.0 when you're in the studio I like to uh, put 70% zebras on my face so uh, that way I know my LUT will work with that 
uh, because when you're in the studio, the, the camera might think you need more or less exposure. So since I'm exposing for a person, I expose to the skin tones at 70%. You can do that outside too, but I find that when you're outside in the sunshine, just the, having the meters at 0, 0.0 works fine. Anyway, here's the same thing here. So LUT camera crisis and there you go. Battle is mostly won. Color grade to taste. Add a little more contrast. Put in a little more saturation. Do whatever you want. So there's mine. There's Paul Leeming's. There's mine. There's Paul Leeming's. His has a little more saturation, a little more reds in there. But uh, again, they were exposed differently. And this one gets the job done for free anyway and with regular exposure. If you want to color grade yourself, this I think is the easiest way to do it. Here is the footage that is all blown out as usual. And uh, we will go to HDR tools here in Final Cut. Drag that over here and it changes it. But look up here, HDR to Rec 709. You want to go ATLG to HDR. Now this here, you have a much better looking image and it is much easier to work with. So for me, I would probably put down the uh, set, uh, make up the contrast a bit here, like this, already looking a lot better. Saturation, I would take down a nice bit because it's a little oversaturated. And uh, there you go, already a pretty usable image. Now is this, that's pretty easy. So when there's a way to do this uh, in DaVinci Resolve, I will show you that as well when we get in there. Saturation down a bit more, but there you go. See, now that looks pretty good. But again, that looks good on my monitor. It doesn't necessarily look good on your monitor, which is why I like the Leeming LUTs so that you know it's gonna be accurate across the board with no matter what you're doing. But this is a way for you to be able to do it by yourself. Now, here's the thing. The way a lot of people want to color correct the footage here is they go to the uh, they have the blown out footage from HDR and they come in to the color space override. Then they go down to Rec 709. And this will give you a greeny cast image. Now that image here on Final Cut, when you do the color space override, that is the same as when you drop your image into uh, Premiere Pro on the timeline or DaVinci in the standard settings on the timeline. They do that Rec 709 conversion for you, but you are left with that greenish image. Now, if you use the Leeming LUT, on that greenish image, it'll be fine. If you use my lot on that greenish image, it'll be fine in, in all of the editing softwares. So uh, that's one of the reasons that the LUTs are so good. You can just use them across as long as your editing software has LUTs. And to me, the easiest way with Final Cut and DaVinci, I don't know about Premiere because I don't have that program, but uh, is to do what I just showed you in Final Cut. And now I will show you in DaVinci. So uh, let's open up the old DaVinci Resolve here. Okay, now we're in DaVinci here. And if I just grab an HLG clip and I throw it in, you're not going to see that blown out footage that you see in Final Cut, but you are going to see that greenish ugliness that you did see before. And I'll use the other two here and this one. Okay, and now we will go over to our color panel. And what you can do right here is uh, this one, which one's the Leeming LUT? This one here is the Leeming LUT. So if you go and you apply your Leeming LUT, where's my Sony one? It's here, Pro 3 and HLG. So there you go. And now it uh, looks a little redder on my screen here in DaVinci than it does in Final Cut. But when I render the two video clips, they look identical. It's just the way that they're presenting information on my screen, which is what I mean about the Paul Leeming LUT and the color accuracy. Even looking from uh, DaVinci Resolve to Final Cut, the colors look different. And then when I export them and put them up on YouTube, they look the same. So, you know, then we can do the same thing with mine here, the LUT camera crisis. And there you go. The battle is mostly won. But if you want to edit the footage yourself, like I did in Final Cut, nice and easy, then here's what you do. You go to File, and then you go to Project Settings. Then you, uh, you press this tab here. The, it's on Presets. You go to Color Management. You go to Color Management here. Also, this is where you get your LUTs. So you can open your LUT folder here, and this is where the DaVinci Resolve keeps his LUTs. So uh, the one I gave you, the download or the Paul Leeming, you can load them in here into the DaVinci Resolve. And then uh, don't forget to say update lists after that and save. And uh, then your LUT will be ready to go in there. So let's go back to our project settings because it closed on me. And uh, see now right here in the color management, it says DaVinci Resolve YRGB. So that is standard what you're going to see when you just first open up DaVinci. But if you change it to color managed, 
and then you take this Rec 709 and do the wide gamut to get that wide gamut that we recorded in. And then you do your color output space is gamma 2.2, Rec 709 2.2 because it's for web distribution. So we go here like this and then we save. And now, as you can see, the image is no longer greenish. It's uh, it's kind of still a little, little too saturated, a little blown out, but much easier to work with. So you go to your color panels here and then, uh, yeah, you say you go right here. I'll turn the saturation down to about, I don't know, I find about 38 is pretty good. And then I take my highlights down a little bit and then uh, my mids as well. And why not put a little contrast in with the blacks? And there you go. Pretty simple. It's uh, again, that is just by eye. I didn't use the color charts. I mean, you can get, you can line up your color charts with all your colors. You can uh, get further in depth into this, but this is just a quick and dirty method to, if you want to just eyeball it, it's the easiest way to do it. And in fact, if you don't want to just eyeball it and you want to use your color checkers and all that stuff, uh, using it this way, converting it in DaVinci Resolve and converting it in Final Cut in that way will allow you to color grade. If you try to color grade that green one, um, the one by the default settings, uh, it's much, much trickier to color grade. You're definitely going to need a color checker for that. And even then I find my results are just not good enough for the most part. I spend a lot of time doing the work and it doesn't come out that great. So that's how I do it. Now, if you've been wondering what I've been using the whole time here, this is the X-Rite Color Checker Passport video. And uh, these things, they seem like they might be a little expensive, but they're not. They, it, it takes a lot of money to do this ink properly. And these things are uh, worth their weight in gold. This was about $100, I think, and is easily the best money I have ever spent when it comes to color correction, things like that. You can uh, set your white balance, you can set your exposure, you can mess around with the colors, and then you know you're getting accurate color. See, this is the white balance thing, and this is a little focus chart. I don't use that as much, but uh, this thing here, I use constantly. I, uh, I make sure that my exposure is right by looking at these things here. I make sure my white balance is right, and uh, I also, I can color grade as much as I want because I always have this as a reference so that I don't go off the rails. Therein lies another advantage of the Paul Leeming lot in that you don't need a color checker and you know you're gonna get accurate results. As long as you manually white balance properly and you set your exposure the way he has outlined it in his uh, PDF there, then um, you're going to not need a color checker. I mean, it's still nice to have and I do use it when I'm using the Leeming lot to make sure everything is correct. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on what new scars I'm going to have all over my face next video. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go out and slice up my neighbor's rose bush. Oh, I'm cutting the hell out of that thing. He's going to rue the day.